Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. Where did humans come from? This has always been one of the ultimate questions in science. Creationism believes that God or the Creator created humans in His own image. But evolutionism believes that humans descended from monkeys in a longer lineage spanning eons back. Sumerian mythology has it that the Anunnaki gods created a new race of intelligent beings by combining their genes with the ancestors of human beings. If I told you that in the depths of this universe, there is a mysterious being with a pair of DNA scissors that trimmed humans into their present form, would you think it's just another tall tale? Well, today we'll talk about the amazing discovery of scientists in this topic. The magic DNA scissors might actually be the cosmic rays. We cannot see or feel these invisible particles, but exposure to cosmic rays can unknowingly change human DNA. Cosmic radiation can make an airplane plummet out of the sky, or make a computer counting election votes to turn shockingly impossible results. Sounds hard to believe? Well, let's start with this true story. On the evening of May 18, 2003, election officials were counting the results from Cherbeek, a municipality in central Brussels, Belgium. Suddenly, one of the election officials noticed something strange. Maria Vindevogel, a little-known candidate, received more votes than was mathematically possible. What was going on here? To get to the bottom of it, they took out the magnetic cards and started to recount. Each voter had inserted a magnetic card into the machine and made their selection on the screen. So their vote was saved both to the computer and the magnetic card. The computer originally showed that she had 4,610 votes, but the recount found that only 514 magnetic cards were collected. What happened to the extra 4,096 votes that came out of nowhere? Computer experts were brought in to run extensive tests on the hardware and software of the voting computers. They combed through the data but could not find any bugs. Suddenly, the number 4,096 caught the attention of a computer expert. In the infinite sea of numbers, 4,096 seems to be just another ordinary number. But in the world of computers, it has a remarkable meaning. It's exactly 2 to the power of 12. Modern computers work using binary strings of zeros and ones. In a computerized system, each number is written in binary code. 514 is written like this. 4610 is written like this. I believe that the sharp-eyed viewers may have already noticed the trick. For Maria to receive an extra 4096 votes, only one thing needed to happen. The 13th bit had to flip from a 0 to a 1. In the computer field, this is called bit flipping, aka single event upset or SEU. It's a type of soft error because it's not caused by any hardware failure. If the data is erased and rewritten, the results would go back to normal. But then again, aren't computers designed to follow our commands without making any errors in calculation? Or is this just an ideal wish? In 1978, Intel reported some strange errors popping up in their DRAM chips. For no apparent reason, the ones would spontaneously flip to zeros. After investigating, Intel found that the ceramic packaging used for the chips caused the problem. Unfortunately, Intel's factory was located just downstream of an old uranium plant. Radioactive atoms made their way into the river and then contaminated the ceramic packaging. Trace amounts of radioactive contaminants in the chip packaging decayed and released alpha particles. When these high energy particles struck the right place, bit flipping occurred. As chip components become smaller, its structure gets increasingly complex. The transistor becomes more sensitive to the background radiation, which triggers more frequent, soft errors in the chips. But in Brussels, Belgium, there wasn't any uranium plant nearby, and the packaging wasn't exposed to radioactive contamination. So what caused the bit flipping that led to Maria's ghost ballots? Many of us are familiar with the electroscope. It's a device that detects static electricity. If the test object were charged, the leaves would spread apart and repel each other from receiving the same sign charge. Otherwise, the leaves would stay shut. You may be wondering, what does the electroscope have anything to do with Maria's ghost ballots? Well, don't worry, I'll explain this to you in detail. While experimenting, Charles Augustine de Colombe came across a strange phenomenon. 
When he wasn't testing any object on the electroscope, the device randomly opened and shut on its own. He was haunted by this mysterious phenomenon for decades and passed away without ever discovering the answer. It wasn't until 1896 when French physicist Henri Becquerel solved this mystery. He discovered the existence of natural radioactivity. It turns out that in nature, there are radioactive elements with unstable nuclei. When they go through radioactive decay, alpha particles are released, similar to the example that we talked about earlier. Ionizing radiation led to the spontaneous opening and closing of the electroscope. But the story didn't end there. In 1903, scientists found that even if all radioactive sources were meticulously removed, the spontaneous charging and discharging of the electroscope could still be observed. Scientists thought that it's probably caused by some unknown source of radiation in nature. To uncover this source, scientists worked tirelessly and a series of experiments were conducted. In 1911, Austrian physicist Victor Hess loaded electroscopes and ionization chambers into the basket of a hot air balloon and did an experiment at a high altitude. He found that when the balloon flew above an altitude of 5,000 meters, the level of radiation increased with height. When reaching an altitude of 9,000 meters, the radiation detected was 50 times higher than the surface of the Earth. He realized that the unknown radiation didn't come from Earth, but rather the sky. Hess initially speculated that the source of the radiation could be from the sun. He conducted the same hot air balloon experiment during the solar eclipse, but the readings were unaffected, and the level of radiation was essentially the same. He concluded that the radiation didn't originate from the sun. These rays came from the space. His discovery was named the Cosmic Rays. Hess was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1936 for his discovery. Now, despite the name, cosmic rays are not actually rays, but rather high energy particles that travel through the universe. The cosmic rays that reach the Earth consist of about 89% protons, which are hydrogen nuclei, 9% alpha particles, helium nuclei, 1% nuclei of heavier elements, and 1% electrons. When they enter the atmosphere, they collide with the molecules of the atmosphere. The interactions create a shower of free particles and electromagnetic radiation. Therefore, when cosmic rays reach the Earth, they bring a shower of secondary particles. So we're always bathed in a cluster of air ejected by the shower. At this point, you may be wondering, how much energy do cosmic rays actually have? Well, in 1991, the University of Utah detected the first ultra-high energy cosmic ray, and they called it the Oh My God particle. It was a proton that crashed into our atmosphere at nearly the speed of light. The kinetic energy produced by this tiny proton was 300 EeV, which is equivalent to the energy produced by a baseball traveling at 100 kilometers an hour compressed to the size of a proton. The energy created even exceeds the most powerful Large Hadron Collider by a factor of 10 million. That is enormous. It's like a high energy bullet that has been winding its way through the universe for billions of years. Fortunately, OMG particles are not common. Also, we owe thanks to the protection of our atmosphere. Otherwise, people hit by this bullet would become sterile or even genetically mutated. Let's revisit Maria's ghost ballots. Investigators eventually came to the conclusion that Maria's extra ballots resulted from a stream of particles from cosmic rays that hit the transistor in the computer at the election center, causing a bit flipping on the 13th bit. If this is the first time that you're hearing about this theory, perhaps you're thinking to yourself that such events must be extremely unlikely, right? But is that really the case? People who often play games may occasionally encounter some inexplicable bugs in the games. In 2013, speedrunner Dota underscore Teabag encountered an extremely rare bug when challenging the TikTok clock level of Super Mario 64. Mario suddenly jumped to the ceiling on the screen. Other players wanted to imitate this after seeing the video, but they all ended in failure. Dota underscore Teabag didn't know how this bug was triggered. Later, another player, Pen and Cook, even offered a $1,000 reward to motivate any player who could reproduce the bug. But six years later, still no one could claim the reward. However, the player Pen and Cook is not only a master gamer, but also a programmer. So in 2019, after six years of hard thinking, he announced the method to reproduce the bug, which is bit flipping. 
Under normal circumstances, when the bug occurs, Mario's coordinates in the game are 11000101. If the last one of the coordinates is reversed to a zero, Mario would jump to the ceiling. So what bit flips the last digit of Mario's coordinates? The most likely answer is cosmic rays. Cosmic rays have the potential to change some of the functions of electronic devices, says Dr. Leif Shaker, chief radiation engineer at NASA's Jet Laboratory. When your computer gets the blue screen of death or your phone freezes, don't blame the manufacturer right away. The culprit could be an invisible bullet from the depths of the universe. On October 7, 2008, a Qantas A330 passenger plane flew from Singapore to Perth, Australia. The weather was fine and flight conditions were good. But three hours after the plane took off, an alarm sounded and Captain Kevin Sullivan noticed that the primary autopilot was turned off. He started the secondary autopilot, but as soon as he turned it on, he received an overwhelming wave of warning messages. The weirdest thing was that the system gave both stall and overspeed warnings at the same time. The captain turned off the autopilot and switched to manual operation. At this moment, the plane suddenly began to nosedive without warning, and the captain quickly pulled the control lever to try to level a flight direction. The steering system was completely out of order. It wasn't responding at all, actually. Everyone on board the plane was subjected to a gravitational acceleration of minus 0.8 times and it felt like the plane was flying in an upside down position. Many passengers shot up in an instant and some passengers' heads even collided violently with the ceiling of the plane. After dozens of seconds, the control system finally responded and the plane leveled. But a few minutes later, the plane made another sharp dive and the control stick became very sluggish. At this point, the captain realized that the main flight computer had failed, and so he decided to make an emergency landing at the nearest airport, Learmonth. The captain was sweating nervously as the plane descended lower and lower because he knew that if the plane dove again this time, it would result in disaster. The captain, a former U.S. Army pilot, made a precautionary emergency landing flight maneuver used in naval flight training so that he could descend while pulling the nose up to ensure a safe landing. The entire cabin cheered as the landing gear system's wheels hit the ground. While 119 people were injured on the plane, they all survived. Although the danger was over, the investigation of the cause of the accident was imminent. With nearly 600 A330s flying around the world, would the same accident happen again elsewhere? Well, in the end, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, or the ATSB, found that the accident was caused by ADIRU an air data detection system on the plane. The ADIRU collects important data such as altitude, the speed of the aircraft relative to the air, airspeed, and the angle of attack. The angle of attack is simply the angle between the wing and its airflow. If the angle of attack is too large, the plane would stall. Data at the time of the accident showed that angle of attack sensors detected a sharp 50 degree nose lift. The ADIRU then transmitted a 50 degree angle of attack data to the main flight computer. At this point, the aircraft's automatic protection system realized that the angle of attack was way too large, and so it issued a dive command twice. The unusual thing here is that the nose of the plane had not been raised at all, which meant that this strange set of angle of attack data is likely to be the real culprit of the accident. So how did this set of data come about? All data of the ADIRU air data detection system is stored in 32-bit binary numbers, of which the first eight bits represent the data type, such as altitude, angle of attack, airspeed, and so on. Bits 11 to 29 are the actual data. Coincidentally, by inverting a one in the data type representing height to zero, the data type becomes angle of attack. Investigators repeatedly tested every component of the ADIRU and found no problems. So then, the biggest possibility is that cosmic rays hit a CPU module in the ADIRU assembly, inducing a bit inversion, causing the ADIRU to mistake the altitude data as the angle of attack data and transmit it to the main flight computer. Shortly after this incident, on December 27, 2008, the ADIRU of another A330 flying from Perth to Singapore suffered the exact same malfunction. But because of the earlier experience, the pilot turned off the computer completely and the plane didn't nosedive. 
In fact, Hess's experiment in 1911 already told us that the probability of being hit by cosmic rays at high altitudes is much greater than that of on the ground. NASA even estimates that when an astronaut lives in space for a year, one-third of their bodily DNA becomes damaged by cosmic rays. And cosmic rays affect us much more than that. In the initial evolution of life on Earth, cosmic rays played a non-negligible role. In the mid-20th century, Watson and Crick discovered the structure of the DNA double helix, ushering in the era of molecular biology. Over the decades, as scientists have studied further, people have been surprised to find that if you walk down the spiral structure of DNA, like walking down a spiral staircase, you'll notice that they are always turning to the right, never to the left. This is the right-handedness of DNA, which is favored by the DNA of the vast majority of life on Earth. What scientists are curious about is why the sugar molecules that make up artificially created RNA and DNA in the lab are evenly distributed between left-handed and right-handedness. Why does the chirality of these molecules show a bias in nature? Most scholars believe that such right-handed chirality should be randomly generated. During the evolution of life, the right-handed structure happened to appear first, or it had better environmental adaptability, and it slowly took over the dominant position. It wasn't until May 2020 that a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal proposed a new explanation. The right-handed shape of the genetic material of most living organisms is not accidental. It is very likely that it was unexpectedly affected by cosmic rays millions of years ago. Just now we mentioned that when cosmic rays reach the Earth, they'll dump out a large number of secondary particles. One of these types of secondary particles is called muons, which have obvious chiromagnetic field direction. Muons may make it easier for right-handed DNA to mutate. Millions of years ago, before there were electronic devices on Earth, what was hit by cosmic rays were not transistors, but rather nucleotide bases in the DNA strands of our ancestors. So where do these invisible particles that have traveled through the universe for hundreds of millions of years come from? Unfortunately, currently there's no way for us to determine the specific source of cosmic rays. This is because after they are produced, they are affected by the magnetic field of the universe. By the time they reach the Earth, they may have already rotated dozens of times around the Milky Way. So we can't even be sure about the exact direction they came from, let alone their source. As a result, cosmic rays have been one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in astronomy since their discovery. Well, that's all for today's story. What do you think about this topic? Feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time on the next video.